In this video, as part of our boundary survey workflow, we want to take a look at uh, moving into the site survey. So we've done our deed research, we've tied the monuments that are out there with our control work, and uh, all these little sort of teal dots here are additional site and topo work that we picked up. Now I've uh, organized my traverses into groups, so I really don't need this research group anymore. So all I do is select the group and untag one of them, and those all get turned off. I'm going to leave the deeds on, but um, I'm basically uh, pretty much ready to do the same with uh, the control points as soon as I uh, get them uh, moved into some other traverses. I'm going to collapse this research. I'm going to collapse the deeds and expand this topo. Now, I happened to go in out of this 170 points or so, about 137 of them were, were topo points. So if I were to leave those tagged, I could come back up and untag these uh, control points here. And these are my topo shots. Now, if I go in and take a look at this uh, traverse here, and I can either select one of them and edit traverse, or I could open the traverse here. Um, I probably had something in here that said, hey, this is a, a break line, so BK1, BK4 like that or um, I was down on a sanitary connect that was the, the ground. Here's the base of a 38-inch cedar. So I actually went through here and said, these are the shots that are, that are ground shots. Um, I could have coded those you know, to kind of do that for me, but I'm using a number of additional, like here's G for ground. So that wasn't any other kind of feature. It was just a shot on the ground somewhere. So lots of ways for me to bring these into traverses, but that's how I got all of these into this topo points traverse. And of course, those are the points that I would use for my uh, topographic survey. But I want to come in instead and uh, show you these uh, feature traverses. So these are traverses I created by simply recalling points out of my control surveys, control traverses. So these control traverses had my control points, but they also had all these side shots as far as picking up brake lines for topo and trees and that, that sort of thing. So I simply came in and said, hey, I'm gonna recall all of the trees into a traverse. So here's a traverse that has all of my trees in it. And I'm, I'm just expanding some columns. You can see them and changing to single line just to make it fit better here on this video. But here's all my, my tree shots. So I can go ahead and uh, tell Traverse BC how I want to draw those, and they'll show up on the map. And I've done that. So I'm just going to, again, select the feature group and tag one of them so they all show up here. So here are my trees. Let's zoom in on this lot just a little bit better. Uh, I've got a number of these sort of break line areas here. I'm going to put a gap in here because I don't really need to see that line going across. So this is where a drive comes in, and I've got a brake line above and below. Here's another drive that comes in. So again, I've got some brake lines above and below, and these are going to go into my topographic survey, but they're also going to show me where the edges of these um, driveways are. Kind of neat. Uh, here are those trees that I picked up. Uh, I picked up this uh, pad here, and, and if I just put the cursor over any one of these um, features, like this uh, trailer cover here. My tool tip is gonna tell me which traverse drew it. So this is drawn by the trailer cover traverse. So it's this one right here. We saw in some of the other videos, I can also come in and delineate traverses. So I can say, here's all the trees. Here's the, um, there's a shed over here. Here's the trailer cover. Here's the shore. Okay. So really I was, I was free to go out there and just pick up whatever I, I wanted to pick up. 